I am your host, Debbie, here to help you get in the know about Waco. All right, this week I'm going to be talking to Dr. Alan Northcutt in his current run. Um, if you want, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, thank you, uh, Debbie. It's, it's good to be back. You're actually. back, yes, yeah. you're a veteran. <laughs> Found a new studio, and um, you're right, I'm running for City of Waco, a council seat. It's District 5. There's five districts in the city. And that's Woodway, correct? Woodway area? No, actually, you know, Woodway is a separate Oh, town. okay. So they've got their own city council. But I live in <coughs> Waco, and the way it works is you have to run in the district you live in. Oh, so I okay. live in District 5, so I run for the District 5 seat. And um, so I'm running against three other people, and the election's coming up. Is uh, The official day is May 1st, the election day. So This will come up with plenty of time for you guys to get out and vote. Right, right. Um, early voting, I should mention it right away, I guess, is April 19th to 27th. So that's coming up in less than a week, yes. just a few days, so early voting. And then regular election day is on a Saturday, May 1st. Okay, well, I'm glad we got that out of the way, so get out and go vote. Um, now, if you want, go ahead and tell me some of your policies that you're standing for. Okay, well, um, maybe I should tell you a little bit about myself. I mean, that was... that sort of, you know, the background of it. I'm, um, a, sort of the background of why I'm standing for what I'm standing as far as policies, though. But I'm a physician. I practiced in Waco for 31 years, my entire career. And I'm a pathologist, so basically that means I looked through a microscope for, for 31 years, you know, and <laughs> many, many people in Waco I have been diagnosed by, me. you know, I see their specimens and I tell them whether it's cancer or, you know, whether it's benign. And I <laughs> explain that because a lot of people don't know what a pathologist does, so that, that will give you a little, you know, background on that. So I did that for 31 years, and I also did... Um, volunteer pathology work for over 18 years in Kenya and I would travel every year and I'd work for a, a month you know like a medical missionary kind of thing at a, a mission hospital and so that was a great you know experience and very rewarding so I did that as well so that was you know half of my life and the other half was environmental activism and you were with the um, Friends for Climate here that's in Waco, exactly right. and that's what I had you on for before, so if you guys go back and look for that episode. Yeah. Was that for the art show? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it was for the art show and the styrofoam recycling event. <laughs> okay, so that's right. Um, so, yeah, I've been director of that organization for about a 10 years, about a decade, and of course we've done many, many projects during that time, including the styrofoam recycling and the climate crisis art show. So that's my my background. And what happened about starting in 2018, I really got concerned about the climate crisis. And as someone in science, I you know read a lot of science, and that's really what interests me. And so I recognized that this truly was a, a climate emergency. And if we don't act, the impacts are going to get more severe, and they're really going to be catastrophic. I mean, they're bad enough now in, in many places, but they're going to get much worse. So what the science tells us is throughout the world, everywhere, the uh, people have to act to cut their greenhouse gas emissions. That's cities, states, nations, you know, the whole world. We've got the Paris Agreement. But cities have to act. And a lot of activism had been focused on cities, particularly the last four years, because at the federal level, nothing good was happening. So we started in 2018 um, talking to the city of Waco. I did a presentation to the whole city council, and then almost every council meeting I would be there and I'd be talking about climate, you know, the time they allow you to speak. So we actually influenced the city of Waco. They started making some, taking some baby steps in, you know, like buying a couple electric cars and that type of thing. But progress was really slow. So I decided, since I did all this work every time anyway, I prepared 
you know, for these council meetings, I, I tried to interact with the city council that I wanted to try to run and get on the council myself, where I can really, hopefully, you know, have more impact on, on getting the, the city to move to renewable energy and electric vehicles and all the things we need to do. And I felt like the council really needed someone like that, you know, because there really wasn't anybody who, you know, really took that role. And as I've said before, I don't think I've ever heard a council person say the words climate uh, change, much less climate crisis, in a council meeting, yeah. if you can believe that, you know. So in some ways, it's still a forbidden word, I think, in, in Waco, you know, among some people. Yeah. So I'm, I'm running for uh, council, and, um, you know, that's, that's sort of how, how it happened. And that's, that's my number one issue. Uh, it's not the only thing I care about, but that's, that's number one. Yeah, and I know you're also advocating for um, public restrooms to have, um, like, actual, like, cleaner, like, to be cleaner, number one, and also to have uh, cleaning materials, correct? To have, like, paper towels and have actual soap during COVID. Um, so I know that's one of your platforms, is that right? <laughs> How did you know that? Um, so I actually went to the metaphysical market this weekend at Skellington Curiosity, uh, and then I heard you talk, so I was there. <laughs> I, did, I did mention that. Yeah, that's, that's right. I, um... It sort of falls under a, an area of policy that I call you know, quality of life. And I mentioned that there's a lot of emphasis, as I mentioned on Sunday, a lot of emphasis on tourism and Magnolia, and that's all great, and that's helped the city grow and so forth. But I think we're neglecting other parts of the city. And the thing you mentioned is during COVID, I noticed at you know Cameron Park, which I go to a lot to play disc golf, you know, that I thought I've never seen any soap in these restaurants. Never. I don't once. know if you have either. No, I don't think I've ever ever seen it. And we go to play disc golf as well, and not once I have not never seen soap. I just keep hand sanitizer on me all the time. Good. So you <laughs> confirm that. Yeah. That is true. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> okay. Now, I hope you feel like me that that's outrageous. Mm-hmm. You know, um, especially during a, a pandemic, how are people supposed to, you know, wash their hands? You know, for Twenty seconds, or you know, and I'm yeah, sure the without soap. that is a uh, very important to it you. Really caught my eye, and um, I thought it about it for a long time. But then during the pandemic, it just was too much to take, you know. And so um, that is one of the issues that I'm concerned about. And if I'm on the council, you know, I'll do whatever I can to fix that. Now, that doesn't seem like a very difficult issue to fix. It doesn't sound very costly. Mm-hmm. And I would say that. You know, I've been to other city parks, you know, because we've got, you know, around here, Midway, Hewitt, and so forth, and some of them do have soap. So I don't I don't see any reason why the city of Waco can't have soap in their restrooms. I mean, it's, I think it's outrageous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they've got millions and millions for Magnolia, but they can't afford a bar of soap. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's crazy, and, and, so, and it's dangerous. So... Yeah, so you're right. That is one of the things I'm I'm concerned about. Um, other kind of quality of life issues. Uh, China Spring is a, is an example. Uh, they don't have a city park, mm-hmm. and the city of Waco has been talking about that, you know, and about funding for a park. But again, I don't see how that should even be, you know, debatable or an issue since they they always found. Uh, funding for tourism type projects and yet a project that would affect many more people more Wacoans you know that live here every the day families and, that are know, here families yeah. here that pay taxes here don't have a park you know so that's something that I, I care a lot about and um, so I think there's you know I'd have plenty to do if I was on the council and yeah. um, I think my opponent, either the incumbent, is a businessman, a banker, and probably has somewhat different priorities than than I do. And I think um, one of my sort of platform positions has been the council needs someone with a background in science and medicine. We have, you know, bankers, uh, lawyers, Lawyers. real estate, lawyers, right? And... um, I don't think there's anybody with a real 
you know, hard science type background. And I think that would that would benefit the council. You know, when you're talking about pandemics, when you're talking about extreme weather emergencies, it would help to have someone who, who really understands these things more more deeply, have some some you know basic knowledge and underlying knowledge of this. So that's another kind of feature of my uh, platform. <clears throat> um, another is that I think I'm a unique candidate in that I am retired. I retired about three years ago. So I would be like, I would consider myself a full-time council member, and I would be willing to really devote majority of my time to that work, to that job, because I know how complicated it is. I may have mentioned, you know, when I was talking Sunday that, that when they have an agenda, every they meet every two weeks. They have an agenda packet that's usually over 300 pages long. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm thinking, like, how do these um, council people that work, you know, like full-time jobs, how do they even have time to get through all that and really mm-hmm. study it? So, I mean, I think it's a great thing that they do a volunteer job like this, mm-hmm. but I think I could contribute in that I would have more available time, you know, to really devote to the council and to those agendas and to trying to get some some things done. So I think that's a plus for for my campaign is that I would be a full time council person. And I um, I don't know if you've ever tried to. Are you, you live in the city of Waco? Um, so I technically live in Spiegelville, but it's technically Waco, so it's in that weird little cusp area. Is that District Five? I believe it might be because I see your signs everywhere. So. <laughs> Well, it's... Because it, it's it, like Woodway, Spiegelville, Waco, in that little bubble area. Yeah. Where we are. <laughs> yeah, you know, they they talk about the 84 corridor. Mm-hmm. And I live out there, actually, toward McGregor, one of those oh, okay. subdivisions, like Stone Creek Ranch. Mm-hmm. And um, Spiegelville may well be District 5. I think but so. I had to look at the map, but I think it would be. And um, so... I forgot what the point was. <laughs> Where did we go from there? Well, we were just talking, talking about uh, talking about different policies. Talking about um, I, I don't know how we start talking about where I live. <laughs> um, yeah. But there is a sign right on Ritchie Road. So I work at Simple Bills currently, uh-huh. and there's a big sign like right by my work. Like someone has it right across from MISD. The um, right down there by their is it on the building. access road? Yep, right, right before there. you get to Ritchie. Yes, right there. Well, I put that up myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, that one I see yeah. every morning on my drive to work. Well, um, and how can people get your signs? Um, do you want to say how? Well, that's get a your signs? that's a good point. Um, I am very happy to come out and put up signs. I probably put up eighty or so, you know, different residents myself, mm-hmm. you know, personally, so they can email me. It's a like the letter A North the direction C. Is in cat a north c at aol.com i'm the only person on earth who still uses aol so you can remember <laughs> but um they can email me and all i need to know is their address and i'll be happy to come and, and put up uh, signs and we also have uh, bumper stickers uh, real nice bumper stickers and i i know this isn't a visual um I'll take a picture yeah. and put it on my. I'll put it on the Instagram. Okay, so we have um, um, a dark blue background because that's my favorite color, and white and yellow uh, lettering, and we have a, a sun, which is emblematic of solar energy, renewable mm-hmm. energy. So that's kind of why most of my uh, materials will have a, a sun on them. I love that. And, yeah. So that's we thought that was kind of nice. So. You'll see my signs, you know, out and about. They'll be dark blue, and they'll have north cut in big, big letters, and they'll have a sun on them. But if you want um, a yard sign, bumper sticker, uh, we even have some T-shirts left. Uh, just email me, and there, everything is free. We don't, you know, charge for yard signs like some campaigns do. We believe in, in doing it all, you know, free, and. Um, because we believe in what we're doing, we most of it is funded, you know, ourselves. We don't have any big corporations funding us. It's all, you know, individuals and stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so please. Uh, and I was going to say that no matter where you live, 
in Waco, and, you know, Waco has so many suburbs, and, you know, Robinson, and Hewitt, mm-hmm. and all that. All the little it, area. <laughs> it doesn't matter, because these signs are about name recognition, mm-hmm. so if you support our campaign, if you are concerned about the climate, or about environmentalism, about quality of life, um, then it would be a great help to us if you would put a sign up, because it would help... Um, raise awareness, and we're up against, you know, a banker, so he's got <laughs> big signs everywhere because, you know, properties that they own and all that kind of stuff. So we, you know, we're sort of the underdog, the I would say. The campaign. We are, we are much more grass, grassroots campaign, I would say. And so, you know, we need help from everybody who's, who's listening and, and supports us. So <clears throat> please email me, feel free, and we will get you whatever merch we have. I think we were out of the smaller t-shirts, but we have large and extra large still, and we'll probably order some more, but, so no matter what size you need, just, you know, email me, and we should be able to get that to you. Yeah, and you just launched your new website, too. Um, do you want to tell me what your website address is, so that way people can find more information there as well? Right. Actually, our website's been, you know, up for a while. I never did a, real, a post about it, I guess, but it had been up for a couple of weeks. And it's real easy to remember because it's just my name, alannorthcutt.com. I'm perfect. Can't get any simpler than that. <laughs> and Alan is, I guess the spelling of my name could be confusing, though. It's, it's the A-L-A-N spelling. And Northcutt has two T's at the end. So that could maybe cause some confusion. Mm-hmm. But um, alannorthcutt.com. And take a look at that because of all the different sources of information, that's the most detailed. Mm-hmm. You know, you can find... You know, my whole CV, my whole resume is there. Issues in detail, uh, events, you know, pretty much covers everything. There's some nice uh, images there, too. You know, some, like, uh, portraits, and then there's some pictures of me, you know, doing different things. And um, I um, I volunteer with Meals on Wheels a couple of days, sometimes three days a week, and I... There's a picture of me, you know, carrying food and meals on wheels. There's Aww. different different pictures of me doing, yeah. you know, different things around town. So take a look at the website Definitely. and, um, you know, I think you'll find some, some, you know, helpful information if you're just deciding, like, who to vote for and that type of thing. And you have an Instagram account. Is that correct? We do. Um, let me see if I can remember what that is. All the ways we can find you. <laughs> right, right, right. Um I'll look for what the exact title of that is. I'll um, tag you as well. That way it will be on there. Okay. Everything will be tagged. That way people can find you, find your information, and I'll add your website um, in the description as well. So anybody can find you just by clicking on it. I'm lucky to have my son, the um, senior in high school, and he's, um, I guess Instagram is his preferred, mm-hmm. you know, social media. So he kind of takes care of, of my Instagram, but it's... Um, a Northcut MD. I believe it's this top is the actual yeah. title, right? You got it. You got it. You know, I I say that because I've I've been a Facebook person mm-hmm. myself, you know, and mm-hmm. and I've only gotten familiar with Instagram during this campaign because you know one social media was more than enough for mm-hmm. me, but it is a Northcut MD for the Instagram and Twitter. I I really don't know what it's what That's it is. All right. <laughs> it's something similar something to similar. A Northcut, I yeah. know. But I but there actually is Twitter, but I think our most of our activity is on Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram. Yes, and you do post a lot in the um Friends for Climate as well. So I've seen a lot of your stuff being you posted through there. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to share that where people can find you there as well. Right. I try to you know I try to do a post daily, you know, about the campaign or something about climate, something related to an issue that I'm concerned about usually every day around 6, and I post it on the campaign Facebook uh, page and the our organization, Waco Friends of the Climate, and on just my regular personal, Alan Northcutt. The uh, campaign, let's see, I can, I can find that for you. I can locate the title. It's kind of long. It's, um, okay. <laughs> So the Facebook campaign, uh, Facebook page is Dr. Like Dr. Alan Northcutt for Waco City Council, comma, District 5, F-I-V. So that's pretty long, but that's that's probably the 
you know, best place, I guess, to go to see it. Daily information about the campaign. Dr. Alan Northcote for Waco City Council, comma, District 5. And then you mentioned the organization, which I've been working with for 10 years. is Waco Friends of the Climate. And then my personal is Alan D. Northcote. All right. So, yeah, plenty of, plenty of, <laughs> plenty ways of to find social you. media, plenty of ways to find me. And <clears throat> you already mentioned my email address. Mm-hmm. If you want to get a hold of me for any, any questions or any requests for merch or whatever, that's, that's the way to do so. All right, so. awesome. And thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a pleasure having you on. Well, I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I want to see if there's anything I forgot to mention because I don't want to leave anything important out. Just make sure. Yes. Um, as far as issues, one thing that I do want to mention is I support equality. And, you know, there are, you know, still, it's still possible to discriminate in the state of Texas. So I, I would like to see the city develop uh, policies to prevent discrimination based on, you know, age, sex, race, uh, ethnic background, sexual identity. And right now, you know, people can be discriminated against, mm-hmm. particularly sexual identity. And I think that's wrong. And some cities have developed policies uh, to prevent that. The city of Waco actually uh, has a policy for their own employees, mm-hmm. you know, to prevent discrimination, but it hasn't, you know, been broadened mm-hmm. to involve the whole city of Waco. And I'd like to see that happen. So that's a, uh, sort of a different area that I didn't, didn't talk about. Uh, well, we focused on climate, mm-hmm. quality of life, and equality is another, you know, plank in my uh, platform. So, and I, I tell you that I'd like to mention the styrofoam. Mm-hmm. A couple of yeah. events, let me mention a couple of events we have coming up oh, if we yes, have a course. minute because the event section. <laughs> yeah, the event section. Whether or not you know this is separate from the campaign, maybe because you might live in you know you would not be able to vote, but. I'm very proud of the styrofoam recycling program we have. You know, there's the, there's no official city recycling of styrofoam. Mm-hmm. If you look at the city's uh, app, you know, for recycling, it'll say styrofoam put in the landfill container, you know, which is horrible. And styrofoam is a large portion of, of landfill material, statistically. So about two years ago, I found a place that would recycle styrofoam. It's actually in Waxahachie. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, why not collect styrofoam and transport it there? Mm-hmm. So what we've done is every three months or quarterly, we rent U-Haul trucks. And on a Saturday, people bring us the styrofoam. We fill up the trucks, and then we drive them up to, to um, Waxahachie and unload them. Yeah, and you fill up two trucks last time. Yeah, well, we've done even better than that. We wow. had a campaign uh, um, maybe two weekends ago, something okay. like that, on a Saturday, mm-hmm. and we filled up three trucks wow. with styrofoam. And it was really funny because we ended, uh, we go from nine to one. Mm-hmm. It was about 15 till one. Our trucks were totally full. Oh, no. <laughs> and people were still trickling in. Oh, wow. We were putting the styrofoam in the back of our personal vehicles because. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to turn anyone on or you know, away, yes. you know. And some of my workers were saying, "Oh, we got to close. You know, we don't have more space." I said, "Well, we'll find space." We'll get space. So we put it in the back of our vehicles. Mm-hmm. You know, we strapped it on our backs. Whatever we had to do, <laughs> you know. And we actually accepted all wow. the styrofoam. But it's really grown. You know, we started out the first time uh, summer two years ago, and we didn't even fill one truck. We didn't know if anybody was going to show up. It's grown each time, and before we had like, you know, two and a half, and I thought, I thought, well, so, you know, sorry, we had one and a half okay. trucks. I thought, okay, two is fine, two yeah. rentals. So this last time, I rented two, and I was like, whoa, you know, it's, we're gonna need it's three. <laughs> 10 o'clock, and we, we're getting full. So I rushed and rented a third truck, mm-hmm. and we filled it up. So it's a great thing, and I, I wanted to say that... Um, We'll be having the next one about, let's see, this is April, so it be around, you know, July. Mm-hmm. So uh, look for it in the, you know, if anybody still reads the newspaper, which I recommend, but it's in the, they have a section called Briefly, which uh, lists, 
you know, events happening in Waco, we put it in there. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be on our Friends of Climate, on mine. Um, if I'm on the council, it'll be on my you know, council. <laughs> yes, it'll yeah. be on my council page. Mm-hmm. And so we'll um, let everybody know. But what we do, we have it on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. So what I would do is if you're interested in recycling styrofoam and, and People in Waco really are good recyclers, I think, and people want to do this. Just save up your styrofoam. If it's little pieces, put it in a in a bag. So you know, because it's hard for us to deal with you know, little pieces, you know, by themselves. Put them in a bag, save it up, and then in July, that during that Saturday, bring it down nine to one, and you know, we'll get it recycled. And it's really, you know, you'll feel good that you kept that out of the um, the landfill. And actually, they make things like, um, you know, frames for glasses. Mm -hmm. I inquired, like, what happens to this recycled styrofoam. That's one thing they use it for. Um, What they do is they get the air out of it, Mm -hmm. and when they do that, it turns into a hard, dense plastic. Oh, that's cool. So that's that's how it works. (coughs) Excuse me. So that's happening. And then I want to mention one other event that we've been doing. This will be our eighth year. Mm -hmm. We have our Earth Day reusable yes, bag so event. Exactly. You probably heard about that. Yes. And um, did you know about the styrofoam event, by the way? Yeah, I knew about the styrofoam event. I've been following. Uh, it will be on the No Waco yes. calendar as well. You click on the podcast page and then scroll to the middle and there's a calendar of events. It'll be right there. Cool. So check out the No Waco calendar events if you haven't Wonderful. already. I didn't know y'all had a calendar. So. Yes, I just started doing it. So. Nice. <laughs> it's a nice. new edition. I like calendars. <laughs> I like this. Um, so for Earth Day, we have been handing out reusable shopping bags, mm-hmm. and you know this will be our eighth year. This will be the eighth annual um, uh, reusable shopping bag distribution. We give you know free bags, and depending on our how many how much we have, how many people we give out, you know one or two uh, uh, re- reusable bags. And if you already have one, still come by and because. When you go to the grocery store, you need more than one bag, mm-hmm. obviously. So keep them in your in your trunk. That's, that's what I recommend. So you don't get there and say, oh, no, I don't have a bag. Keep them in your trunk so they're always with you, right? But this will be um, April the 24th, Saturday. On Earth Day? Yeah, com- close. close. You know, the closest day we could get to Earth Day. From, I believe the hours are 9 to 1 again, okay. if I'm not mistaken, at the farmer's market. Yeah. In case I didn't say that, the farmer's market will have a, you know, a booth somewhere near the, uh, you know, where the farmer's market people, they have theirs. Mm-hmm. We're usually right beside them. Right on the corner. On the corner, usually, yeah, that's right. And uh, look for our sign, you know, Earth Day, reasonable mm-hmm. bag. And probably almost everybody knows, but for the most part, that thin plastic they give you in H-E-B or other grocery stores isn't recyclable Mm -hmm. and so you know landfill or it blows away ends up in the ocean and the land and the air because it's so light it's terrible for litter and it's gotten into our uh, food system it's estimated now that everybody ingests like a credit card size of plastic per week I don't know if you knew that because it gets into you know fish other animals, and then, you know, it's in the food food chain that way. So, if you can use these bags, you know, you're contributing to not using that kind of single, what we call single-use plastic, which is so dam- damaging. And also, from a climate standpoint, it's derived from uh, fossil fuels, so you, you know, skip that part, at least for, to some extent. You know, you're replacing those plastic bags with the reusables. And... The interesting thing is it's like a, a win-win situation because they're so much better than plastic bags. They're stronger. They don't mm-hmm. break. Sometimes those plastic ones yep. get holes in them. They break. You lose your Happens stuff. all the time. Right. So, you know, they're just much more convenient. You can use them for other things, too, besides groceries. And, you know, I use them to carry stuff all the time. If I'm going to an event, I need to have some you know, scissors or tape or whatever, just put them in one of those bags and, you know, you're ready to go. It's very, very handy like that. So that's coming up April the 24th. And we'll probably have some uh, uh, campaign 
merch there too. So it's another reason to to, Ooh, to come merch. by. Right, <laughs> you can come by. It's all free, and that will still be about uh, a week before uh, May first, where the you vote it, big election day happens. So please come by, and um, so I'm Alan Northcutt, MD, and our slogan is caring for people and planet. So that's sort of my orientation. You know, I, from a background of you know, not a, a money background, but, you know, caring for people through medicine and caring for the planet through environmentalism. So that's sort of my uh, orientation and what I care about. And, you know, if those things appeal to you. I appreciate your vote on May the 1st. And thanks for inviting me to be here. I, I really yeah, enjoyed it. of course. It, so. It's a pleasure having you on again. So now you're a veteran for the No Logo podcast. <laughs> That's and again, right. thank you so much. We very much appreciate it. Thanks, Deborah. I enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning into this week's podcast. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story. And just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness of everything. That's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. (laughs) Bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about bros and foes and heroes. Gonna Gonna tell tell you about. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. Thank you.